Hey everyone, in this video I'll be talking with Abhishek and we'll be talking about what is the right approach to learn to code. I think this is the most important thing that you should be learning if you are getting into college, if you want to start your journey of learning to code. There's a lot of things that you can do and not all of the things work effectively. So in order to learn how to properly learn to code in the shortest amount of time and get the most skills, build the most projects, you need to know the right approach. And that's what we'll be talking about in this video with Abhishek. Hey Abhishek, thank you for joining me here and how are you doing there? Hey Sean, I'm doing great. Uh, it's, it's getting cold out here, but so far holding up so good. How are you doing? I'm doing great as well. So tell me about your approach. What do you think about learning to code? Now that you are in the industry as a Facebook software engineer, what do you see out there? What people do wrong, what people do right, and how can we learn to code effectively? Yeah, I think like I've been also kind of thinking about this a lot. And in my experience, I've noticed that like this is me personally wasting time, right? Well, we used to like, this was the case, I think two, three years ago or something that you go on YouTube, you would watch a tutorial. Okay. Someone, somebody will make a tutorial about how to build X thing, right? Using react or using something. And you'll watch that tutorial. You'll sit nicely. You'll watch on your phone, your laptop, whatever. And you will feel like you learned something because they'll show you I'm building this. Some of them won't even show you. They'll just fast forward the build process and you will actually see that, okay, something is happening and somehow things are showing up on the screen and you will feel like you learned something, but honestly you learned nothing, right? Like it doesn't work like that. I've, I've done this so many times and I would, I would see tutorials of someone building an app. And then I would be like, okay, I've learned this. Then when I later go on and build my own app, I learned that I've learned nothing. So that is the case. So I usually stop. So that's why I stopped posting tutorials. Even I did that mistake. I posted a couple of videos on my channel, how to build YouTube app using react native, but I realized that's not going to help anybody, right? Because it's, it's not a waste of time. It, it's good to get inspired maybe, but like that's, that's not the way learning happens. If you really want to seriously learn how to build a mobile app or web development, you will have to build something of your own because there's so much learning in building, right? You build projects, you know, you run into issues, you find errors and like you're, you're, you're blocked basically. And then you have to learn to unblock yourself. You have to learn the art of Googling. You have to learn the art of finding situations, solutions to your problems from the web, use stack overflow and stuff like that. So that process is where the learning happens, not by watching someone doing an, a scripted uh, version of a program and without any hassle, right? Because everything, even if you follow a tutorial, it's perfect. It's you're probably not going to end up in an error situation, but when you're building things yourself, you will end up, you will be completely blocked. You'll be like, okay, how, how, how am I supposed to get over this? And you want to spend a lot of time just struggling to, you know, find the solution. And that's where the true learning happens in my opinion. Right. I think that this happened with me as well. When I was learning React or any other technology, I used to look at a lot of these tutorials, a lot of these, uh, you know, building apps, app clone videos on channels like Clever Programmer and other, other places. And I learned from that. But the problem with that was that I was learning, but I didn't really know how to fix errors. There was, whenever there was an error, the person would just cut it. And then I would just be presented with this full proper uh, tutorial of how to actually build a YouTube clone or how to build a Spotify clone, how to build an Airbnb or whatever project that they're trying to build. Then what I did is that once I built, like for example, I built a simple Amazon clone by looking at a video tutorial. After that, I tried to integrate something else onto it. I tried to build some other uh, functionality to it. And I think that was really helpful to me than just looking at these uh, already built clones and just looking at these tutorials. So yeah, exactly. Right. Because they will show you, okay, they will go through the process, they will build everything and then you can even follow along. Most people, first of all, don't follow along. At least you've tried to follow along and like you, your problems are fixed by that person. But the truth is that in reality, when you, when you run into that kind of an issue, which you do all the time, you don't know what to do. You don't even know how to debug it, right? Like, have you seen a tutorial on YouTube, which shows you how to debug a program, how to debug a production server, because those skills are important as a software engineer. You need to first understand what's wrong with your code to find the solution to it, right? Nobody talks about it. Nobody shows you how the debugging process works, for example. And that's a skill that you will inculcate when you start building projects and running into problems, fixing them and stuff like that. So that part is like really missing. Would you, would you basically recommend someone to go for the complete tutorial of how to learn, for example, let's say, um, react JS, for example, or should they be just going for a clone and then just learning it on the go ad hoc? What do you recommend exactly? 
Okay, if we talk about React, for example, right? There are plenty of technologies, but like specifically talking about React, I think, and the fundamentals remain, right? This is how most software engineers go about learning something new. First of all, you will not just start doing anything. You will go to the official documentation, whatever technology it is, get in the habit of reading the official documentation because that is your single source of truth, right? Because that will have everything to do with the library. They will explain to you how that, so tutorials basically teach you how to use React to build something. The documentation will teach you what is React, why React, you know, why, what, what problem does it try to solve and like, how does it work? And like, those things are very important. So some things like some technologies might have very huge documentation, which may not be possible to read and by end to end, and it might, it might not be very productive, but with React, like you can read the core concepts in the documentation and you can understand how, what React is doing, how it works under the hood, how it works under the hood. and that is actually going to help you like to propel forward because you will learn how to think in terms of react and that only the documentation can give you documentation is very concise very right. nice so you go to the official documentation you read it and they will have they the documentation will have quick start guides and like examples and like then you build smaller projects and then you go creative you build your own projects with no specific uh, you know process on how to build it step by step learning because that's when you will have to figure out what the next steps are and and, and that's how your learning will improve over time. Got it. One more question people ask is, should they be going for like free courses or should they be going for paid courses? And uh, you know, paid courses can also be divided into multiple segments. There are these live classes that people do teach you something. Uh, then there are these, uh, you know, Udemy cl classes that are pre-recorded, courses that are pre-recorded. So what is better and what saves time? What is more effective according to you? I think in my opinion, from what I've seen, like uh, these pre-recorded tutorials are the same basically, right? No matter whether you're watching it on YouTube or Udemy or wherever. So it doesn't add so much value. First of all, by the time you actually learn it, the thing already might be outdated because I remember taking one course on Udemy about Node.js or something. And then when I was taking it, it was already two years old, right? And the syntax had changed, the signature had changed, a lot of things had changed. So like. And like, then you basically need to juggle and waste more time. So I would say if you're doing courses, first of all, you need to find courses that promote project based learning, right? Courses need to be giving you the context, how, you know, what is react and how it works, for example, and you, it will, it's going to ask you how to like, it's going to ask you to build projects, right? And if it is that kind of a course that is focused on projects and not just giving you tutorials to do this to do that and I think that's the right way to learn and when it comes to free or paid courses there's no like guarantee that a paid course is nice or a guarantee that the free course is bad because I have seen free courses that are amazing for example from free code camp or from scrimba you know they have very nice free courses but I have also seen some paid courses which were you know not useful at all so you need to like look into it you need to do more research read reviews ask other people who have worked on those courses and stuff but uh, yeah, there are plenty of courses online and the best resource I like I, I saw in some of your videos you have mentioned, right? Like uh, hardware, uh, CS50 and MIT. Yeah, open that is amazing. Where, yeah, so those are like treasures, right? Basically, you can get a CS quality education. The best part about those courses are just the energy that the that the professor has. Like David J. Mellon is the name of that professor from, from Harvard. And I, I just love how he teaches. So that's actually a really good course that everyone should be looking at if they're just getting started into programming. Exactly. So when you were doing that course, did you notice that he's showing you tutorials? I haven't done that course. So I, I'm just running out wild here, but I know for a fact that he'll not be showing you tutorials on this, this, this. He would try to explain to you the fundamentals behind the why of what you're doing right why you're doing this and what right. problem it solves and like how to approach this that's the more important part about learning it felt a lot more uh, a lot more real world like he was talking about the explanations of let's say for example arrays right he was explaining arrays with the help of having uh, peanut butter jelly and he was trying to show some explanations so that people can actually relate it with real world and that is how they'll be able to understand it much better so that is definitely a good thing. Exactly. So then that's what, that's the thing of breaking down the concepts into like a first principles kind of a thing, right? He tried to explain to you, I don't, I don't know the exact example, but he tried to explain to you the real world concept of an array. Whereas a tutorial would be like, oh, this is an array and this is how you put things in the array, right? So that's, that's like, right. I think in my opinion, that stays with you. That stays with you for a long time and you probably never forget it once you learn it the right way. 
so it's like worth mm-hmm. spending time on these old gems and maybe reading their books and stuff like that just to summarize first of all they should be looking at the documentation then they should try to build stuff on their own and then fix the problems using stack overflow and the documentation once again what is next what should they be doing next okay next i think like it's pretty obvious right once you start learning and build like you will obviously not build a big complex project in your first day let's say you read the documentation and you started learning you maybe took a course now you know basically what the fundamentals are you know you build some small projects you will gradually go on to increase the complexity of your projects that you're building and these projects will not only help you improve your learning but they will also help you to you know they will become your portfolio projects in the end right like that's not like you simply built those projects for the sake of your portfolio you you were learning and you were also after you build those projects you can like put it on your portfolio and use it to you know show to people show to your friends like show to prospective companies and stuff like that and and that's not going to go waste meanwhile you will also pick a lot of other skills like if you're building a project on git for example right git is a skill that you will pick up while doing the project because you will have to save it on github and uh, you know it is there for anyone to see and stuff like that so yeah the, like you will learn a lot of extra skills while building projects right because i think personally the most important thing about being in this field being a software engineer is you have to like keep learning and you have to get really good at learning things fast because you know how in the olden days they used to tell us that doctors have to learn keep learning their whole life like i think it's pretty pretty much true right. for us right because technology has changed mm-hmm. so much technology has evolved like you were talking about react like react for example when i started doing react we had class based components right today they didn't they don't even talk about the class based components the newer projects class based mm-hmm. components was a necessity if you had to use state i did one of the highest rated uh, udemy courses and that was on react and redux and that one taught us about functional components and class based components but functional com- component was only like 1 hour and uh, class based was like 10 hours or something they were just going a really in depth and talking about how that really works which of course is not of much use right now unless you're working in a company that uses that uh, class based component so yeah exactly so this is what i meant right like they were the course was probably made like a few years ago and you're watching it in 2021 mm-hmm. i think today class based components are pretty much irrelevant right there are very rare edge cases where you cannot use functional components for example ho- with hooks and everything and it's so much better in my opinion functional programming it makes everything better but like if you look at these old courses they will i mean i'm no, i'm not saying it's a bad thing like even i worked with class based components and like that gives you a context of how react works and like re- you mentioned redux also right most if you go follow a redux tutorial it'll teach you how to use redux and like how you can use it for state management but you need to fundamentally understand what redux is i for example implemented my own version of redux like a simple state reducer kind of a thing where there's a state and then you take an action and then you use that action to reduce it into the next version of state like that will actually help you understand the fundamentals of how a technology is working and that will take you a long way and that no tutorial will because why will a tutorial tell you what react uh, what redux is and how to build redux right a redux tutorial will teach you how to use redux to do something but how will you understand what redux is why it's needed and like those fundamentals those questions remain unanswered yeah makes sense awesome bro thank you for joining me here and i would like to see you more in the videos yeah i i like talking to you man we can like keep making more videos like this and i hopefully it does help more people and hopefully it reaches out to more people to learn from and yeah that's the goal so we can keep doing this sure that was a video i hope you got to learn something from this if you're still watching just write in the comment section i watched till the very end you can take a look at my instagram handles and my twitter handles all in the description and yeah that's it i'll see you in the next video